Mark Ray Mundy for MMAfighting.com here at UFC 229 Media Day with Tanya Evinger, who fights Aspen Ladd on Saturday at T-Mobile Arena. Tanya, it's been a little bit since we've seen you in the UFC. The last time you fought was July 2017 against Chris Cyborg. Why, why the absence? Uh, well, I was supposed to fight. I guess, uh, what's her name? Yeah, that other girl. Vieira. Yeah, yeah Vieira. No, no, before her. That I got hurt. I blew my knee out. I got my leg broken. So, um, you know, I had surgery. Kept me out for a while. And then, uh, I don't know. They had me like a seven-month layoff in, in between my cyborg fight and that fight that they put me up on. Um, so I, I don't know why that long layoff. Maybe they didn't know if I was a 35 or a 45er. I think that's where the confusion lies. But obviously they put me back in finally, and then, then I ended up getting hit, injured. And then my girl got injured, Vera, and then uh, here I am. So back to a big card, I guess. That's cool. But you are a 35er, correct? Yeah, definitely a 35er. I don't, know, I don't know why there was a big confusion with all that, but I think... That's that's what I heard. You know, they thought I was a 45er, and there's no way for me to fight. Blah blah blah. blah. But you know, I don't know what the case is. Can you explain the injury? Because when it first happened, I think it was it was a few months ago, maybe in the maybe spring, and it seemed like it was pretty devastating at the time when it happened. What exactly was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a gnarly break. Uh, it was just some dude. I was. It was my first day back. Lights foreign. Uh, some random dude came in the gym and like literally broke my leg in half, broke everything, ACL, LCL, MCL, meniscus, and broke my tibia. So tore it all, broke it in half. But it was it was gnarly. It was a long recovery. How painful was that? Uh, more devastating than I couldn't fight. I I don't even think I cried. I just screamed at first like a whole bunch, and then I started yelling at the guys like you fuckers. <laughs> you know I got to fight. You know it was my first day back, light sparring, so it shouldn't have happened. But. Um, you know, I, I just am um, really particular about my training partner, so for me, uh, that was something that shouldn't happen in the first place. And I obviously fired my coach and, and all that stuff, and, and I'm out of that gym and stuff, so it, it took a full turn. Where are you now as, as, as far as training? Uh, I train out at Defenders MMA in Houston, a uh, different gym. It, they, they got a smaller MMA program, but they got a huge facility in their building. So my coaches that I train with now, my training partners come over there, and we just train over there. So you, so you blew your whole knee, but you're back, I mean, just a few months later. How are you able to do that? Oh, it's been longer than a few months. It's been a long time. Uh, you know, I, I did a lot of rehab. I, I feel like I was doing a lot more than what they were having me do and stuff. And I've never had an injury like that. So it, it's an injury that I actually couldn't fight. And normally I have, like, a broken hand or something's wrong with my shoulder or something's wrong with my elbow or something like that, and I can normally fight. But this is one that definitely kept me out. Was it a, was it a hard rehab process? Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, I had two surgeries, so uh, the first one, I, I think that I, at first I was like, man, I'm never getting back. There's no way my leg's going to work right again. This is just crazy. It wouldn't work. And then they, I went in and saw my surgeon, and uh, they said, no, you need to go surgery again. So I went back, had a second surgery, and then brand new leg. It was like it was perfect. So I got no time lost in between the first and second surgery, so it just jumped right back on track. Bionic woman now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Do you, do, you, do you feel okay though? Is, do you feel 100% healthy? Yeah, yeah. I don't. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't have any problems with it. So it's just uh, like it never happened. They gave you the fight against Vieira that was going to be in Sao Paulo, and and she's one of the top fighters at 135. So it seemed like they still consider you as a top 135er. A win in this fight, I, I guess, would also put you in that mix. Do you feel that way that you're you're still among the top 35ers in the world? Oh, I definitely feel that way. I don't know if that's why they put me there. I don't know who they were trying to build, but they're never trying to build me. So, you know. Um, I'll just fight whoever I, I can, you know. For me, it's it's. Uh, I feel like I'm the top, so I'm gonna fight everybody. If I I should be able to beat everybody below me, so that's the way I felt. I'll take it. You've been around the game a long time. You've had a lot of success. Former Invicta champion. You're the underdog against Aspen Ladd, who is is I think 23 years old. Is that shocking to you? It's always shocking. Every one of my opponents that comes in, even when I fought for Invicta, I was the underdog, and I'm like, I'm the champion here. Like, I don't know why. I don't know what the difference. Like, where they come up with all this stuff, but it doesn't matter to me. That's all. Doesn't matter. Just prove a point and, and go beat him again. You were probably an Invicta when she was when she was first coming up, right? When she first made her pro debut, I believe. Yeah, I was a champion. She was uh, fighting. I think she fought at 25 for a little bit and then came up to 35. I'm still the champion, guys. <laughs> Last thing, Tanya, uh, main event, Habib McGregor. How do you see it going? Uh, I think uh, Khabib's got it. I think he's going to take him down. If he gets him down, I think it's over. Is that your is that your wrestler bias uh, talking? Or? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, I'm a wrestler. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. Thank Appreciate it.